Hey everyone, my name's Janos, and welcome to This Week in Animation, where I pick out highlights from current news articles regarding the animation industry, and give my opinion on them. The stories this week come from various sources, and I'll have links to all of them in the description below. Now without further ado, let's get into it! Preceding an upcoming new Global Ocean Treaty at the United Nations this year, Greenpeace has teamed up with UK-based animation studio Ardman to create the short but poignant animated film, Turtle Journey. The film debuted on January 14th, and was created to illuminate the fact that 6 out of 7 sea turtle species are currently threatened with extinction, as well as the broader point that ocean biodiversity is under attack from human pollution and poorly regulated exploitation. Ardman is the studio behind the classic stop-motion animation series Wallace and Gromit, which is pretty apparent from the use of their signature character design style. Turtle Journey follows a family of sea turtles on their way home from visiting their grandparents, who make it back just as a massive bulldozer sweeps through. The film uses a mix of stop-motion animation for the characters and CGI to detail the backgrounds. Personally, I find it quite visually impressive, with smooth and expressive animation, nice lighting and backgrounds, and a solid color palette. Additionally, the music and Academy Award-winning cast do a fantastic job of selling the emotional and heartbreaking message of the film. It's a little jarring to be smiling at the cute and humorous characters one second, and then instantly realizing the gravity of the message that's being conveyed the next, but I think that's exactly what they were going for. It definitely creates empathy for the characters, and shows you the extent of what they're faced with. The film is available to watch on Greenpeace's YouTube channel, and will be linked in the description below. Netflix has acquired the global streaming rights to 21 Studio Ghibli films, including Castle in the Sky, My Neighbor Totoro, and Kiki's Delivery Service. This library will be available to watch starting on February 1st, but for some reason will not be available in America, Canada, or Japan, and will instead be streaming in Asia Pacific, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. So if you live in any of those restricted countries, like me, you can always get a VPN to get around it. Which brings us to today's sponsor, NordVPN! <laughs> Just kidding. Our channel is way too small to get a sponsor. So if you're enjoying this video, it'd be awesome if you could give it a quick like. But yeah, seriously, if you get a VPN, you can use a server in one of the available countries and you'll be able to view these films. If you don't want to do that, HBO Max will have all these Studio Ghibli films available for the US audience in spring 2020. Apple TV has showcased its upcoming animated musical comedy series called Central Park from Bob's Burgers creator, Lauren Bouchard. The show will follow the Tillermans, a family of caretakers who live in Central Park, New York, as they try to stop a nefarious heiress, Bitsy Brandenham, from turning the iconic park into a bunch of condos. The Tillerman family includes the park manager, Owen, his journalist wife, Paige, and their kids, Molly and Cole. Bitsy Brandenham is a hotel heiress who will presumably serve as the series' primary antagonist, and this woman next to her is Helen, her, quote, long-suffering assistant. Then there's this guy. I couldn't find any information about who that is, so I'm just guessing he'll be a kind of Teddy character, who plays a violin like a ukulele. Now, I believe this is all the information and artwork currently available, so there's not a whole lot to say. I actually am a huge fan of Bob's Burgers, but honestly, I can't say I'm too impressed with Central Park so far. I'm expecting it to be good, don't get me wrong, but it looks very much like a Bob's Burgers clone with a new coat of paint. The creators don't seem to have taken any risks in terms of art style. It's a musical comedy, the character art is almost identical, and the backgrounds maintain the same rough line work of Bob's Burgers. There's something to be said of a creator using their iconic art style for sure, but I think they could have branched out just a little bit more with this. Of course, this is just one image, so I could easily be proven wrong when we get a trailer in March. Either way, I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us. Hulu has announced the release date for its upcoming adult animated series, Solar Opposites, from creators Justin Roiland and Mike McMahon. The show will follow a family of aliens from a more advanced world who are forced to take refuge on Earth and have differing opinions on whether they like our planet or not. Not a whole lot else is known about the series. I believe this is some new artwork depicting the family building a snow human. And we also got a teaser trailer, if you can even really call it that. It's just some art with motion graphics, but I mean, I like the premise and I'm a fan of Justin Roiland's work. Of course, I have the same complaint about the art style as I did with Central Park, but I already voiced my opinion on that, so I'll just leave it there. Given that it's a Justin Roiland series, I'm sure we can expect some over-the-top and ridiculous humor, 
but I'm wondering if without Dan Harmon, the show will lack the depth and emotional substance of Rick and Morty. I don't know yet, but either way, I'm sure it'll make for a good time. The series has eight episodes total and is set to release on May 8th on Hulu. Disney Plus has released a trailer for the upcoming seventh and final season of the animated series, Star Wars The Clone Wars. And honestly, it looks great. I was a huge fan of the original series when I watched it a few years ago, so I'm super excited to see its conclusion. The new season is set to air on Disney Plus starting February 21st, and will include 12 episodes total. The story is apparently taking place just before the movie Revenge of the Sith, perhaps giving us some further insight into the lead up to Order 66 and Anakin's transition to the dark side. I'm also excited to see what happens with Ahsoka Tano. And speaking of which, supervising director Dave Filoni has promised an epic lightsaber duel between her and Darth Maul. This is apparently a scene that the production team took very seriously, quoting that this one had to be among the best, if not the best, we ever did and even went to the lengths of bringing in Ray Park, the actor that played Maul in The Phantom Menace, to do motion capture for the fight. Looking at the trailer, I'm very happy with how the animation is looking. It's staying true to the original style, but with updated and modernized graphics, and really, I think that's all fans could ask for visually. The action scenes look exciting and well shot, and from the little they showcase, the voice acting seems great. I am expecting really good things from this series. It's a Disney Plus exclusive, and they definitely need more crowd pleasers after the conclusion of The Mandalorian. Go ahead and check out the full trailer for yourself, and let me know your thoughts. For our final story this week, it has been confirmed that Netflix is currently working on a standalone anime movie called The Witcher – Nightmare of the Wolf which will expand on the world of the popular Netflix series The Witcher. The movie will be directed by Lauren Schmidt and Boo DeMaio, who both worked on the series, and will be produced at Studio Mur, a Korean animation studio behind The Legend of Korra, the fourth season of The Boondocks, and Kipo in the Age of Wonder Beasts, amongst others. I've been extremely impressed with this studio's work on Kipo, and their work on Legend of Korra and The Boondocks definitely proves they can pull off an anime style, so I'm really excited to see how this movie looks. With the second season of The Witcher still about a year away, Nightmare of the Wolf should serve to satisfy fans with a summer 2020 release as they wait. Personally, I was a fan of The Witcher series, but I wasn't blown away by it. However, I actually think the show's world could look even better in animation form. It's unclear whether any of the actors from The Witcher series will return for voiceover work, and we don't have any official trailers, logos, or art so far, but I'm looking forward to learning more as we get closer to its release. And that'll about do it for this week in animation. Did anything interest you? Do you agree that creators should try to branch out with their art style, or do you actually prefer the harmony between their work? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, and if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to leave a like. It would help out a lot, and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.